Count of three. What are we starting with? <laughs> All right, I'll 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 do the opener. Yes. <laughs> I can't close, but I can open. <laughs> okay, go. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Coats and Jackets, and we are back. This is Kimberly. And this is Mandy. <laughs> And we're doing the Harry Potter book club on Pottermore. So we decided on a little format we're going to try and follow every week. Generally, we are going to attempt to get together on the weekends, but we both have very busy schedules. It's the summer, so sometimes we're going to be meeting in the evenings. But we're going to try and kind of do our own little version of the Twitter conversation. Yeah, every Friday, Pottermore, um, and it's on their official Twitter for the book club. Mm -hmm. So it's at WW Book Club. They have a Twitter discussion, a live one, and they will pose usually about three questions mm -hmm. relating to the theme for that week. Once the questions are up on Fridays, we'll have a look at them, and anything that's not already covered in our video that would be a good thing for us to discuss, mm -hmm. we'll go back at the beginning of next week's and we'll start with a little sort of discussion recap. Yes, just so that that way we can also participate in the Twitter conversations um, and kind of bring you guys up to date on, on what they talk about too, if, if you're not participating in the book club. Last week we didn't really participate in the Twitter conversation. Most of it was an introduction. We, we did that in our video. But in our video last week we had discussed, we had a little bit of a, a nerd crossover moment and we discussed as to which hobbits in the Lord of the Rings book series um, would be in which house would be in which house and we posted the question on our Facebook page and so I was gonna say surprisingly but it's not surprising because um, we we know people we, we know people <laughs> we know people we we know a lot of uh, we travel in all the nerdy circles all the nerdy circles <laughs> the conversation started um, so there's going to be some some clips, I think, going to be some some photos going to be, we're going to put them up here. So you're going to probably see those. They will randomly appear mm -hmm. on the screen, people's mm -hmm. comments. Uh, but one of the things that came up that we had also come to the same conclusion to in the mm -hmm. video, and in fact, it was the first thing that was said, was that, you know, Frodo was definitely Gryffindor. Mm -hmm. um, but they also figured uh, that Samwise would be Gryffindor. That's true. I mean, Samwise is pretty brave for really, he stuck by and he's loyal he is which is why i feel like he's hufflepuff he's just there's just something cuddly and loyal and he values friendship so much that makes me think of hufflepuff it, it's true and somebody else made the really good point mm -hmm. that he's brave like cedric but is definitely a hufflepuff because cedric diggory was hufflepuff oh you're not on, that's not untrue but i don't know i still come I, on he made it to the triwizard tournament and he would have won I'm not going to say any spoilers. <laughs> I'm going to keep my thoughts to myself until yes, we get to no that book. Yes, no spoilers until we get to that book. But I'm just saying. I'm just saying. We'll talk about that later. I don't know. I, I definitely... It's, I feel that if he had the choice, he would choose Gryffindor. So that he could be with Frodo. Possibly. That's why I think he's going to be Because, Gryffindor. yeah, he does value friendship. He was more being than sorted, and Frodo had been sorted into Gryffindor. And he, he, had the, he had the choice. They were like, as soon as he knew, he'd have done what Harry did. Mm -hmm. And he was thinking, oh, I want to be, I want to be in Gryffindor because I'm yeah, going to be He would have been pushing that. He, I think but so. But he's, he's definitely Hufflepuff at heart. That's we'll true. agree there. All right. Okay. He could be a Hufflepuff <laughs> at heart. We also discussed how all the other hobbits would be. Uh, definitely Hufflepuff. Yeah, except for we had two other contestants for different houses. Good. Mary. That's true. Because Mary has definitely got the cunning and like the ambition to be That's true. a Slytherin. He could be a Slytherin. He's a little tricksy hobbit. Mm-hmm. He's a uh, very tricksy hobbit. <laughs> he gets into some bad situations. He's not very hobbit-like for true. a hobbit. It's not very hobbit-like for a hobbit. I mean, he, I feel like, could very well fit into Slytherin. And then we talked about Bilbo. And we really thought that Bilbo would be more Ravenclaw. Yeah, well, I brought up Ravenclaw. Yes. Uh, you and someone else figured, well, more so Slytherin. But I'm, I'm thinking Ravenclaw. He tricked that dragon. 
Yeah, but I'm thinking Ravenclaw because he never wanted to be on the adventure in the first place. That's true. Once he was out on the adventure, he was he was very practical and logical, and he did everything by thinking it through and going, okay, what's the next thing I have to do to get out of it? He was very Hermione-like, which is, as we've mentioned, is also very Ravenclaw-like other than the fact that That's she true. was willing to break the rules, mm -hmm. whereas... Um, had he been left alone to have his quiet life, Bilbo would have never broken any rules or been on any adventures. And he was writing a book. And he was writing a book before he left, yeah. Okay. So I feel like he's very Ravenclaw-ish. He could be a bit more Ravenclaw. I will agree, again, agree that yes, he would probably be sorted into Ravenclaw. Definitely not Gryffindor, because he definitely didn't want any of that, even though he was no, brave. he was brave, but only because he was pushed. Only he's, he was pushed into braveness. Um, Whereas, you know, that's another point for Samwise for Gryffindor because he would have followed Frodo anywhere. He would have followed Frodo anywhere. To the ends of the world, in fact. Into a flaming mountain. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> I guess we'll move on to our, our next topic. Yeah, and... so we'll move on to our main theme now. Mm -hmm. And our main theme for the week is Magic and the Muggle World. Magic and the Muggle World. There's so many things about Magic and the Muggle World. I, mean, I, guess, I guess most importantly is like... We're going to start with the types of magical concepts and devices that some of them you see there and how when these books were written some of these concepts were technologically not they weren't a thing they weren't a thing this was 1997 so a lot of these things were not even in the realm of like you thought they could exist so now i mean you're kind of thinking well some of that stuff does exist um, for example, moving pictures. So the idea of having a picture frame that moved back then, that just didn't happen. But now you have digital. You can buy them. Yeah. And you can buy them so that you put SD cards into them. Mm -hmm. And it not only will scroll through your pictures, but the thing that makes it the most like the animated pictures in the Harry Potter world mm -hmm. is that you can do short video clips. So yeah. you can actually play like little short videos so it looks like each short picture or video is moving and telling that story and then it does the next little thing. Well, I think of the perfect example of, um, this is going to sound real cheesy, but during Christmas you can get that fireplace channel and with your flat you screen can. TV <laughs> mounted on your wall, it looks like a moving picture. There's usually some music in the background. Get a little Every so out. often a hand comes in and stokes the fire. <laughs> Maybe a cat walks past, they really jazz it up. Um, but I mean, I think of that, like television back then, you had the huge monstrous devices. Now they're this flat picture frame you hang on your wall. Yeah. So not even just like those digital picture frames that you can put photos in, you can put videos in, but you can actually have that that monitor that could be playing a video. Uh, and the aquarium channel, which is very much like your fireplace channel. <laughs> very thing, much enjoy the, the aquarium channel. Aquarium. My cat likes the aquarium <laughs> channel. He really likes that little yellow fish. But this Get is a jazzed. really cool thing. And mm -hmm. more and more people now too are wall mounting their TVs. Oh, for sure. And it's just, it's really cool because this was never a thing that was thought of. You had it. It was very much a piece of furniture that was in your room mm -hmm. back then. I also think of um, the other things too, such as platform nine and three quarters. So it's a hidden wall that you, that you go through. And, but now, um, I feel like with holograms and things like that, that that could be a thing. And it's kind of a thing at the actual platform nine and three quarters. Really? So when you go to uh, Universal... Again, jealous. <laughs> when you go to Universal and you go through platform nine and three quarters, it very much looks like a brick wall. Mm -hmm. And you see people disappear through it. And then as you get closer to it and you go in through it yourself, it's just a tunnel. And it doesn't look like you're passing through anything, and it's just like you've gone into a tunnel. It's a very good holographic effect that they've set up, mm -hmm. and it's uh, So, I mean, the technology is, is catching up to so that we almost have some of these magical things. The wands that you get are infrared. They are. So, I haven't experienced this, but I've heard all about how you walk around the park, and you get your wand, and you flick your wrist, and something happens. Like, you stand in a certain place. You have to you... stand in a certain place a certain distance away. Yeah. And the infrared monitor picks up your motion and it 
and make something happen. You know, that's interesting as well, that whole concept of while you're not creating magic, you're creating that illusion of magic. Yeah, like there's one with the fountain, mm -hmm. and I don't have any footage of this, but you stand in front of the fountain and you do the swish, and then like water shoots out of the, out of the thing. I can't do that. Jeez. In Hogwarts, um, there are a lot of ghosts kind of floating around. It's a very, very, it's much more in the books than it is in the, um, in the movies. In the movies. Um, for sure, you see a lot more interactions with ghosts. You get a lot of their personalities, mm -hmm. which is really neat. And we, we had a little bit of a discussion about how ghosts in general might be based on magic. Because, um, while, you know, there's paranormal. Yeah, there are paranormal things that sort of happen in the real world. Mm -hmm. But in the realm of the books uh, themselves, you don't ever actually see ghosts. So people maybe feel like places are haunted mm -hmm. or funky things are happening, which might be ghosts or might be other magical things that mm -hmm. they're just sort of rationalizing away. Mm -hmm. But uh, you very much don't see them. No. Whereas in the uh, wizarding world, you can see ghosts. They're very visible. You have conversations with them as if they're right there. You watch them float through things. So, I mean, the, the idea that ghosts may be... Um, you know, in the muggle world may just be remnants of these um, these wizards and witches who have passed away and the reason why we can't see them is because we are not, we're not in tune with that. We don't have the magic to see them, <laughs> yeah. basically. I mean, we're yeah. not, we don't have that magical gene. Yeah. So, um, because Hermione is muggle-born, mm -hmm. as we know, so it's very much a gene that's, you either yeah. have it or you don't. Uh, some sort of mutation or, or some sort of gene. Or maybe it's recessed, so like there's they her parents were carriers, but they mm -hmm. weren't actually wizards. Mm -hmm. But she was, so she got like both recessed genes well, and, and muggle born. Of course there's squibs as well who are uh, magical born but have no No abilities. actual magical abilities. Yeah. You know what else is cool? What? When we very first meet uh, Dumbledore, He's got this strange little device, and it yes. looks like a lighter. Mm -hmm. And we thought it was called, because oh, we were confused about the name, right? Yeah, there was some confusion over the name, because first when they introduce it, and of course mm -hmm. they're introducing a lot of magical concepts right away. Yes. And uh, it's done in a very natural way. So initially when it's referred to, it's referred to as a put-outer. Mm -hmm. And that's the only reference to it we get. But later on in the books, and this isn't like a big spoiler or anything, but later on in the books, I do believe it's called a Deluminator later on, and mm -hmm. it's... I feel like that's We're not given called. a proper name right now, it's just sort of a put-outer. It's also been a while since I read the seventh book, or the sixth book. It's the seventh book. It's in the seventh, seventh book. book. Okay, but um, that whole concept of the being able to take out the light, like... How often have you looked out across the street and your neighbors have power and you don't? Yeah. Or you have power and they don't and you're like, suckers. Or you're going down the street somewhere and like a couple of lights go out. Just go out in front of you. Um, and you know, we put it off as this sort of like, oh, it's just, you know, there's some sort of electrical... Interference you know, or, you know, there's an the issue with the off. generator. Yeah. Um, but what if it's actually some wizards trying to hide what they're doing? Yeah, be all sneaky like Dumbledore was on the cover of night, drop off Harry so nobody would see it. Dropping off babies on doorsteps, you know, doing the thing. There's a very strong separation between the wizarding world and the muggle world, and a lot of these devices try to camouflage. Mm-hmm, for sure. I guess moving on to something else about, um, muggles yeah, camouflaging, Owlpost. I thought Owlpost would be great. You have an owl delivering your mail, come to your house, they know exactly where you are, like, delivered to your house. I like it when they're carrying packages and there's, like, more than one owl. Yeah, and a couple owls have to take a package. I, I try and picture that with eBay and, like, <laughs> me ordering the books off Amazon. Old school drones. It's just Most owls school. bringing things. <laughs> right? It's like, don't mind me, just 50 pounds of books. <laughs> like, 12 owls. 
But other than when it starts to get up in number, like mm -hmm. it's not really something you'd overly notice other than to say, oh, hey, look, there's an owl. Yeah. Like, that's kind of cool. In the day, which is a little off, but fine. That happens. Um, so they are, you don't really think about them. The, the other thing about owl post is you are mentioning about the addresses. Yeah, so when Harry gets the letters mm -hmm. in the first chapter, or not the first chapter, but anyways, in the first part of the book when he gets all the letters, mm -hmm. the address keeps changing so that it can actually get to him. Mm -hmm. So every time they try to move or hide where he is, the address changes. And I think that's so cool because you wouldn't want to have to um, like spend all that postage. You just sort of pay an owl and mice. And then the address will automatically change and make sure it gets to who it needs to. I, as where I pay Canada Post to forward my mail, and I always forget at least like one thing, and it's always something important, like my tax paperwork, or, you know, and it's fine, I don't forget to do my taxes, it's just sort of like when you're so, filling out that box that says, have you moved, and you're like, yes. <laughs> it's that one mingling little thing you yeah. always forget somewhere. Yes, I did move. Like... 11 months ago. Um, or you get a magazine subscription for several years for somebody that doesn't live there. I, I'm getting a magazine subscription right now. That it keeps getting renewed. I've been living in the, our new place for longer than a year and I'm still getting magazines. It was only about uh, two years ago and like we've been here for quite some time now. It's only oh, about yeah. two years ago I think that we stopped finally getting a magazine subscription for someone that used to live here. It's been a while. Like how do you not notice that you're paying for a magazine subscription easily? That's why. You don't notice. You don't notice. And you really wouldn't notice the owls either until you got to the level of problem that like Vernon had where they were just constantly showing up. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, like, the one or two you don't notice at first that, like, sort of fly over him, by the time there was, like, 50 of them on the house, yeah. it started to draw attention. I mean, really, if you have 50 owls in your yard and on your house, you either have a mouse problem or a wizard problem. Like, something's <laughs> It's up. one of the two. Something's going on. Something's happening. You got a vermin problem or a vernon problem. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Moving on to animals. Transfiguration. That's a really cool one that only certain wizards can do to right. themselves. So, how many animals are people? Like, I don't know. Like, how many animals are that are in your home <laughs> well, are people? McGonagall first shows up as a cat, and she's watching the family, mm -hmm. and she's making sure that it's a nice place for Harry to be left in, which, mm -hmm. I mean, it's debatable, let's face it, it's very debatable. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's family, but it's not a nice place. <laughs> that's something we can bring up, like, a way later when we're talking. Way later. Later in the books. But, uh, she's a cat, and only a cat, and... Vernon gets the sense of something like staring at him and like maybe that cat was watching him and I mean animals just watch you all the time They are they're a little creepy. You can you can feel it too. It's the same as when a person watches you like if your animal is really staring at you because it wants something You can feel that stare appears. <laughs> I, I mean <laughs> It's it like little... I'll turn around and yeah. just know that 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 animal staring at my, me. I mean my cat wants to be fed three times a day He's a bit of a, a baby. He knows exactly. He gets fed at eight, three, and eight. And um, he absolutely at like 7.55 p.m. Like he, knows, with a big he knows stare. how to read time, which I don't think a cat can do, but a wizard can do. The whole concept of all of these animals being out and about, and not just cats and dogs. Any they, type of animal. They could be any type of animal. Um, they could be insects. They could be anything. Like the ultimate spy. So. And the ultimate way to go undercover if they wanted. But the only thing about that is it is limited. Mm -hmm. Not all wizards can turn themselves into animals. It's a very, very hard skill. That's true. Um, but they can transfigure other objects into different things. And they don't have to be animals. They could be anything. Like they can transfigure objects, and that's something they learn mm -hmm. as we start reading through this first book. That's one of their classes. That's true, and that would be a great skill. Like, oh, it's like, oh, I wish I had pie. Look, there's pie. <laughs> of course, I went to pie first. That's my first <laughs> example. Is more pie. Have a look. Just saying. <laughs> one of the other things we were talking about how 
for example, Hagrid doesn't really can't do his magic very well because he has a broken wand. Yeah, and you apparently need a wand um, to focus your energy. So you kind of have to have a wand because your magic won't work the same. It'll be very unfocused. Which mm -hmm. is sort of what it's like when uh, Harry's going through puberty and he's starting to get his wizard powers. And weird things happen at random that he can't control and he doesn't know how he's doing them. Like the glass disappears and his hair grows back really fast. I know, I know, I see the smirk. <laughs> <laughs> puberty. Um, <laughs> well, it is. He's 11. Well, yeah. <laughs> Some strange things are going to happen when you're Harry, a wizard. Harry, you're a wizard. wizard. <laughs> you're a wizard, Harry. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, that's one thing, but the whole idea that you need something to focus through and that you can't just do magic. Um, yeah, it's inherently there and magic things will happen, but they won't happen right unless you, you, you yes. can channel it. Yeah. Um, that's an interesting concept as well. I think that you may be born a witch or a wizard, but unless you learn how to use it and you're given that tool. You can't really do much with it other mm -hmm. than things that seem like random and kind of unexplainable. Everything would be a little bit wild and unpredictable, as it is with Hagrid. Mm -hmm. He is definitely that. Um, it also makes it more interesting in the fact that, um, as we learn when he goes to Ollivanders, the mm -hmm. wand chooses the wizard. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you have to have a certain affinity with or connection to the wand somehow, and depending on what wand you're using, your magic will work not as well or better. Mm -hmm. That whole idea you of have to have having a connection with it. Personality and its own yeah. se sense of self. So that, in fact, it's almost. Um, it's almost an entity without being. Yeah, entity. that's what I'm thinking. Like, it of. matters what animal donated a part to it, and it matters what tree it came from, as though all life has a certain essence. And to it is it. something that you see a little bit more in the book that. Um, in, in, as the book series go on, that certain types of wands are more finicky than others. They are not more rigid, not as flexible, and, and you know, just like the people who have them. Um, they have this, like, just this uh, personality all on their own that um, they, you know, I think of Ron who has the hand-me-down wand. Yes. And it's not his. And so, therefore, things just don't turn. He can't control it as well. He can't control it as well because it didn't pick him. So, uh, I thought that was always a really interesting concept as well. But it also suited him in that um, everything with the Weasleys, they said, is very handy. Was handy down. Hand yeah. And he's the youngest of a set of brothers. Now, he does have another sister, but he's the youngest of the brothers. So, he would always be the last one to get everything handed down. So, the only thing that um, we thought was a main thing that wizards use in the Muggle world as a disguise advice because they don't really get, I guess, how the real transportation is supposed to work because they fly on birds. It's true. Uh, they or just use teleport. vehicles to uh, get around in the same way you would a broom. That's exactly. <laughs> uh, flying motorcycle. Um, the concept terrifies me. <laughs> um, I'm afraid of heights. Um, but also motorcycles are kind of scary, and to sort of add that to heights is sort of like... <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I don't... Does it make it go faster because it has an engine? I like, when I'm moving at a high speed, I like to be within a metal um, box. It makes me feel a little bit better. <laughs> would you go supersonic speed because of engine thrust and then also magic? Like, would you, could you just go like ridiculously fast in the blink of an just eye? Just almost like a teleportation. Like, almost, but Ooh. not quite. Is that, like, a thing that can happen? I, I don't mean, know. But then you're flying. So, I I like the fact that they have uh, the flying It still motorcycle. makes motor noises, though. Right? You when the hydro shells out, they st it's still, you can hear the engine coming in the distance. So it's on. <laughs> For the, what purpose, we're not sure. The wheels aren't moving. It's not go Well, I don't Maybe the wheels move in the air. Doesn't make any sense. It's not getting any traction. But um, that whole concept of them thinking that this is how muggle transportation works. Yeah, and that if they just took a muggle uh, transport device and modified it to make it fly, then they could just like camouflage it with all the other muggle devices, no but they else. could still travel by flying. No one will no ever one notice. notice. <laughs> no. 
not this giant thing screaming through the air that never would. Just go past the moon, they'll never notice, just like But by the time they park it, they'll never distinguish it from any other muggle transportation. It looks exactly the same on the ground. Logic. Logic. We decided that rather than completely cover everything, we'd sort of do a top five things that we thought were pretty cool about the Wizarding World. Yeah, flying was number five. Um, I just think it would be a great time saver. Although, then the traffic in the ground would just be traffic in the air. Yeah, and heights are still an issue for us. That's why we have it at five. But what made it a little cooler was the idea that there's also games and things done on it, like Quidditch. Like Quidditch, yeah. I, that would be fun. Um, the other thing is, too, would I be afraid of heights if I just grew up on If you grew up in it, you probably wouldn't. That's right. Probably not. For number four, we mm -hmm. said Neville's Remember All. So... <laughs> I am constantly forgetting things. Yeah, me too. I am always forgetting things. I have the worst. I have notes everywhere. The idea of having a remember all would be really great. The only problem is is that it just changes color. Yeah, so you would have to remember what you forgot still and you'd be like, but what did I forget? And that's one of Neville's problems too. But it's still a really neat idea, so at least you know you've forgotten something. Mm -hmm. It's like that piece of string you tie around your finger and you're like, what did I put that there for? Yeah, it's kind of cool that they have a magical equivalent of a piece of string. That's true, but fancier. Number two, three, is going to be uh, we haven't talked about is wizard chess. So the idea that games are not just um, games, but they are they come to life. So and some of them will actually help you out because I, as Hermione's learning wizard chess, mm -hmm. um, it's like and Harry mentions it as well as he's learning and playing with Ron. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the little knights will like give you pointers for like oh we should go here and do this move mm -hmm. to counter that. I just think about how fun that would be to play board games. I like board games, I'm a big fan of board games. Um, to be playing a board game or any game where the pieces interact with you like that. Like, um, I can't imagine playing You could talk about it as a team and like decide what move to make. Yeah, so um, certain games, I can't imagine playing games like Risk. Pandemic? Um, Can you imagine like just all those viruses and trying to contain them. I can't imagine. Like, Pandemic is one of those games where there's so much conversation happening between the people playing the game because it's a game where you play to beat the game. Yeah, it's a co-op, like people against trying to stop the viruses. But if the game was talking back to you and you... I, I can't... It, that would be just fantastic. Real miniature viruses going everywhere. Yes, like, I can't imagine. I, I It's hard enough to beat already. But if that, if the game was sentient, sentient, like I just can't imagine. I love board games and I think that it would be great. But it'll probably never happen. Number two we already talked about a little bit. Yeah, we already mentioned pictures. Mm -hmm. uh, but we only mentioned the fact that like they can move. So a little bit more detail about that is uh, whenever you take a photograph, not only does that move, but like paintings move, they interact with each other, they can leave their frame and go to other paintings or photographs. And I mean like someone from a photo could move and go to like visit a painting and vice versa and they can all like just talk to each other. Yeah, so the, this whole concept that um, the paintings hold a little bit of personality for the people who are depicted and that they can live, you know, they can leave their frame and go and hang out with other paintings or act as gatekeepers like for the Gryffindor common room or act as spies. Um, and they interact with the ghosts. Also great. Uh, All the time. That's an interesting concept as well. The fact that they have a life outside their frame. Uh, Ron says actually that it would be really boring uh, if the pictures didn't move for them as if they're people. Uh, yeah. He gets really confused by the fact that photos in, in the muggle world are stationary. They're flat. They, they have no personality or uh, soul to them they can't go visit these other pictures and other paintings mm -hmm. and he makes that comment to Harry he says that must be so boring for them yeah it just must be so bored they're just frozen Static in all one time. place and just one place and like uh, one interesting concept like that there is somebody frozen in that space forever like talk about the ultimate torture Ugh. number one 
was, I can't believe we didn't think about this before. It was such a, what's going to be our number one thing yeah, for... Yeah, and the moment you mentioned it, we were both like, oh, right, how did we not think of that? Obviously, of course. Uh, invisibility cloak. Who doesn't Ooh. want that? Who doesn't want an invisibility cloak? Um, not for nefarious reasons, but like, hey, I'm having a bad day. I don't want to talk to anybody. Invisibility cloak. Um, or you're just out trying to get stuff done and you don't want to stop for a conversation and you see somebody you know and you're like, please don't see me, please don't see me, please don't see me. But then they'll obviously see you. Especially that one time you leave your house in pajamas. Oh, definitely. That one time it couldn't be helped because you're just you're just starting across the street. It's going to be five seconds. You're not going to see anyone just, you know. <laughs> you need to go to that corner store to get that milk to make that breakfast. But then you'll see everybody you know on the way. Of course. Wouldn't yeah. it be great if you could just throw an invisibility cloak over you and then it would be fine. Pass somebody some money and get a carton of milk. It would be great. Um, you know, um, so... Steal that last piece of pie. <laughs> of course, back to pie for you. Back to pie. Stealing that last piece of pie. Um, how much, how often do you have pie? Should we just, should I just like always come over here with pie? Probably. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to, but I wouldn't say no. Yeah, I think that's really it for this week, eh? That's it for this week mm -hmm. for Magic and Muggles. Uh, there'll probably be some more things. Like I said, we'll recap that with the Twitter discussion at the beginning of next week. Mm-hmm. And so next week, uh, the theme is, um, first impressions. Yeah, next week's is first impressions. So that's uh, going to be a really great topic. Mm -hmm. And until then, we, we solemnly swear that we're, we're up to no good. good. See ya. <laughs> you know what's cool. <laughs> you know what's cool. It just seems so surprised like I was talking. <laughs> I was trying to be like, I'm paying attention. <laughs> I'm paying attention. <laughs> I'm All not right. being older that you're Maybe saying that'll things. Maybe that'll make the okay. Uh,